Hi, I'm Ed Sperling. I'm the Editor-in-Chief of Semiconductor Engineering. I'm over at Onto Innovation with Damon Tsai. We're going to talk today about challenges in stacking HBM. Damon, how many layers are we up to now, and where are they going with this in HBM? You're trying to get more density in here, right? Yeah, I think right on the HPM, when we are talking about like the three or three, we are still talking about the eight layers. But I think uh, the most industry already moved to the 12 because we are talking about the HPM 4 right now. But as you can image, people are always asking for the more memory for the next gen the AI chips, right? So actually, we already see the trend to the 16, the 20. Even I see some uh, paper from the research center, they are talking about the 24 to the 2030. So my feeling is that the staking will be come higher and higher. That means that will bring the more challenge in terms of the process control for the HBN. And this is going to get very interesting. Let's take a closer look. Sure. Damon, what are we looking at? Okay, so I think uh, let's just talk about the challenge when we are talking about the more staking layer. I think especially people when we are talking about interconnect, I think the quality is always came from the microbound connection. So what is the challenge when we see the more uh, staking layer, what is to bring that the in terms of the uh, quality control for the interconnection. So you can see here, this is the reflow and this is a micro bump. So what we see is that both the bump pitch and the bump size continue to shrink. I think in the past we are still seeing like the 20 micron pitch and the 10 micron diameter, even the 20 micron bump height. But I think once we move to 12 or even the 16, we already see the bump pitch less than the 10 micron. And even the bump height shrink from the 20 micron down to the less than 10 micron. And actually that's been a lot of a challenge for the defense fraction. And you've got all these mechanical issues going on here too as you start stacking these layers and the dyes themselves are being thinned out too, right? Mm -hmm. That's correct, so because uh, once we want to get the more staking high, actually we still need to comply with the semi uh, standard, right? We have the limitation for the height. So that means the die thickness actually becomes thinner and thinner. So that means the CMP, the TSV, all the process actually become very different, especially for the die volume control. That is the same challenge as well. You're still trying to get movement of data very quickly. I mean, this is all about uh, speed of response, right? How fast you can store it, how fast you can access it. But as you go through 24 layers, how does that actually move? Are you starting to slow it down just in the memory itself? Well, actually, I think that it's a good question because uh, in the past, we keep kind of the joking. We are saying that in the future, we will use the AI to enable the AI inspection. But I, actually, I think right now that is coming. So because like you mentioned, because with the more data come composition actually the will slow down the whole process so that means the original architecture actually doesn't work i can give you an example i remember when we are doing the hbn2 the data size is like the 17 million ish but right now we are talking about 100 million bump so we are talking about tons of the gigabyte data so in terms of the data processing i think that both the process control group also need to improve and change the architecture so we are literally enter the era that we are using the ai architecture to enable the next gen ai inspection is that even possible i mean you've got so much process variation you've got warpage you've got all these things that you've never had to deal with before at this level Mm. So I think uh, actually the customer always ask us what is our capability in terms of the process control. Then we always ask back, what is your uh, challenge? And I think that the, always the answer is that we are not sure because we are still in the R&D phase. So that's why as an innovation, actually we are thinking about then how we can address the some challenge that the customer may not know. So our strategy, actually we are thinking about to have the single platform and have the multiple different capability. So that means maybe you, we can do the ABC on the same platform, but in the end the customer turns out, oh, I only need C, then we just the remain stay with the C. Not like we designed three different tools, but in the end they only buy one. Because in terms of our is not good for the supplier as well as the customer. So that's why our design concept is always trying to get the most flexibility platform can suitable both R&D and HVN. And you're talking about looking at this from multiple different angles, which is interesting because you can't really see all the pieces anymore. So now you have to work in concert with different kinds of testing as you're going along here too, right? Yeah, that's correct. So that's why I think uh, actually I also feel like in the past couple of years, our customers' concept also changed because at the beginning, they're always thinking about, oh, let's just do the one to 10. 
then we decide what. But I think right now they already be more specific because I think uh, during this journey, not just uh, our customer involved, we also involved. So right now we have the different engagement. Uh, in the past we meet like the by the quarterly base, but right now we meet in the monthly base, weekly base. We are very tight into their process uh, development, so we can shrink down the limitation that we kind of spread out all the possibility down to the many focus, and we can also get a very good hit rate. I mean, hit rate means that this is really address the yield issue. So I think the circle time also improved a lot during this collaboration. And there's a layer of logic built into this as well, right? And so what problems does that cause? Because that's going to generate some heat as well. That's correct. I think the heating problem is always the challenge. And I think the one of the reasons why the customer also want to reduce the thickness of the silicon because we can reduce the electrical pass. That means we can also reduce the thermal effect. I think that's for sure. But in the other side, they are trying to increase the capacity for the memory that means we have more interconnect so i think uh, we are thinking about how we can really address that issue i think the one trend i'm seeing that is that the customers start to talking about moving to the hybrid bonding for sure because that is the smallest way we can do right and also we are talking about the core optics package i think that is another way we can reduce the overall heat effect across the all ai chip packaging as well what happens with hybrid bonding versus micro bumps how does that change things I would say we are in the uh, transition period because uh, well, one way customers keep thinking about, oh, hybrid bonding is much easier to reduce the thermal effect that we just talked about. But I think that in the other side, they also concern about the yield. Because we all know the HBN, when we do the die-to-die -die stacking, it's already difficult. And we are talking about 16 and 24. So assuming only one die uh, failed across the 500 die per wafer, that might cause a 0.2% ear loss, right? But if we do the wafer to wafer bonding, then we cannot do the pick and place. Then the ear loss will accumulate with the uh, staking layer increase. That's why the customer is worried about until they can fully control the process challenge, they are well, they are very cautious to move from the micro bond to the hybrid bonding because uh, they cannot do the pick and place to do the KGD anymore. So it's a matter of you going 8 high versus 12 high. Is the process still the same or is it a completely different process? I would say the process still remain uh, uh, similar, but I think that people start to think about a concept we so-called the uh, hybrid hybrid bonding. So what does that mean? So for example, when we say the 8 high, so we are always using the micro bump, but the customers start to think about, oh, maybe I can do the two layer with the wafer to wafer bonding two layer with it as a pair, then they use the micro bump, connect those hybrid bonding. So that's what we so-called hybrid hybrid bonding. So I think the people start to think about uh, with the more staking challenge, how we can bring the advantage from both hybrid bonding and the micro bump merge together. I think right now we are still in the RMD phase, but I'm very excited to see that happen because that would be the easier the bridge lead us from the micro bump to hybrid bonding. Let's go back a little bit. You mentioned co-packaged optics. Hmm. Co-packaged optics bring in the same issues that you start dealing with in DRAM, which is they are incredibly heat sensitive. Mm. How do you deal with that in a really tight package where this stuff is all going to be bundled together? It's what's, an, what's your neighbor? How much heat are they generating versus does this work by itself? I would say the cold packaging is one of the way to uh, reduce the thermal effect again, because we are thinking about if we always rely on the electron, to transmit our data, we can image how much heat it will generate, right? So we are talking about a couple of different cooling technology like the water cooling, mechanical cooling, but I do believe the core batching will reduce a lot of the transmission heat. Actually, that can bring down all the thermal effect across the overall package component, even the system component. So that's why today I also want to talk about what is the new challenge we see from the core package. It's not about the thermal, it's more about we are kind of combined the traditional optical uh, technology into the semiconductor and we do see very different structure just design uh, for the optics uh, package i think that would be a very interesting topic to talk about is it going to be pluggable or is it going to be completely built into the design uh, I think in the market right now, we are talking about a couple of different generations for the co package. Sometimes it's still separate. Sometimes it's the building design, right? So in my opinion, I see the tier one uh, leading customer in the AI company, they are doing the merge design. So I would say the majority, I feel like we'll start with the merge design because that can really bring the benefit combined with the, the current AI packaging with the co package. I believe that will be the trend. And actually that is happening right now. So the competition among the HBM vendors must be very intense right now. 
That's true, and I think I can also share one information with you is that uh, in the past, our customer told us their cycle time is about uh, two years per generation. So that means we still have the one year to study the problem and another six months due to the technology implementation. Then we release the production. But guess what? Right now, they already reduced the cycle time to the one year. So that changed the whole scope because in the past, we have the one year to study. But no, now one year, including the R&D, study, pile run, release. That caused a lot of the stress. But I think uh, that is the also demonstrated that the demand for the AI is really uh, pushing the technology operation a lot. And actually, I'm very happy to see that the change happen as well. What happens on the inspection side? That's really where you're coming into this market, right? Mm. So I think speaking of the inspection, uh, let me uh, use the whiteboard to explain a little bit. So because when we talk about the micro bump, the stacking height, actually the most important will be the CMP. Because we already talked about the, all the die thickness become shrinking and shrinking, and also dimension becomes smaller. So that means that all the via we want to do will become very tiny. And as you can image, after the CMP, typically we will see the dense defect, core defect, and those calls could be the briefs or the particle from the salary, from the component, from mechanism. But the challenge is that you can see this is very tiny. So in the past, if we are talking about a 20 micron via with the one micron defect, maybe that doesn't matter because it's still a way behind the process control window. But you can think about once shrink down to the 10 micron, one micron become a 10 plus, 10 percent. That is perfectly heated to the process control window. That means the one micron defect become matter. So that's why we see more and more challenge for the dent and the coma. This will indicate the process variation and the sound escalation during the CMP process. But in the past, we do not have a very good uh, technology, including the soft rate, to detect even distinguish these two types of the defect. I think that is the main challenge. So you either have to get your process absolutely right, or you need to add a lot of redundancy in here, right? Let, that's true. So let's talk about this one because uh, I think, uh, so let's back to the defect inspection. I still remember at the beginning, we are talking about like the thousand defect per wafer. So maybe the DOI is the hundred. So we just need to reduce like the 10% uh, of the nuisance defect. But right now, in order to see this kind of tiny defect, we are inspection like the hundred thousand defect per wafer. Then that means the nuisance become 90%. So how we can reduce the redundant defect, that is the key. And also we cannot spend too much time just on the nuisance defect, right? So that's why, back to my original statement, why we want to introduce the AI to enable the next-gen AI, because there are so many redundant data and we need to find a way to very smart to fill that out at once. Otherwise, we will take forever to do the inspection and that will not feed into the HVN environment for sure. What about die warpage? Mm -hmm. Obviously, this, these things are under pressure. They've got uh, stresses that they didn't have before. The more layers you add, the more stresses you add, the more heat you add, the more the, the stresses increase as well. And also, the, because it's so small, it's, it's going to be very concentrated in a very small area. That's correct. I think the die warpage is actually become more and more critical and the challenge for the high staking layer. Because as we can image, if we sink down the silicon wafer, it's easy to get the warpage, right? So in the past, we only see like the 20 micron warpage, 50 micron warpage. Now what? We are seeing 200 micron warpage per die label. So you can image if we have the 200 micron warpage with the 16 high, we are already out of the same standard. So that's why how to control the die warpage and even find a way to for example, like the pick and place, the good wattage combination, I think that is the key. So that's why we also have the technology to uh, ensure we can measure the die wattage on film frame. Because people, it's easy to measure the wattage on wafer phone, but after the die singulation, actually it's very difficult. So that's why we developed a new technology can inspect the die wattage after the sewing. I think that is the key to enable the 20 high and above technology. And what you're talking about is these chips are so small that by the time you take a look at them, it, it looks plainer, completely even, but it really isn't, right? Uh, that's correct. So that's why uh, I think um, the challenge is that because we put more VR together, and they, as you can image, the stress is just come together, right? And also seen down the wafer. So that's why it's so difficult to control. And I think right now we are still working with the customer. So die warpage is always caused from stress, but how we can reduce the stress from a different perspective. For example, I can give you one example. Right now we are also doing a lot of the H and the backside inspection for the HBN. Why? Because actually there's a lot of the tiny stress from the H. 
and even from the back side because when we send down the wafer we have to put the wafer on the carrier so all the different components actually will be the contributor for the stress itself so it's not just about how we can make the uh, die more flat it's all about uh, knowing all the different charges across the process and save the wattage issue tiny tiny by the different process that i think that is the key Damon Tsai, thanks for a great explanation. You're welcome.